Hello, I'm James Batchelor. And I'm Christopher Drew. And you are listening to Rare Replay. <laughs> Extended introduction there, James. Yes, and the actual song. What the, uh, the full song? Oh, why was that? Because in this uh, not entirely rehearsed introduction, we are uh, we're talking about rare replay, as you well know. Well, so the actual the actual box set. We're talking about the actual game, rare replay. The reason that you and I hide in a cupboard and talk about rare games. It's a it's a damn good collection, I think. It is, as, as collections go, because there have been a lot of collections in the last you know, five years, you know, all the HD remakes and the, the trilogy packs and this and the other, but this, this is a cut above the rest, I think, and not just because of the quality of the games on it, but the amount of effort that's gone into the overall package. If you wanted to be critical, and to be fair, you were being a pedant if you are being critical, um, the, some of the games don't... St- they've not aged especially well we played Killer Instinct last week and we didn't, we didn't think that had aged very well no no um, and there were some games in there I think we wish were in there I can understand why there's no Donkey Kong and there's no Golden Eye and yeah. Star Fox but obviously I'd love them well, that's, like, that's legal stuff isn't it there, there's just yeah Rare will tell you that the reason why they're not those games aren't in there is because you know they didn't create James Bond they didn't create Donkey Kong I'm sure that's a good justification to say now, but I'm sure if they could have got Goldeneye... Yeah, oh yeah, that would be there. Goldeneye would have been in there. I mean, uh, Diddy Kong Racing, for instance, is a game that they can't put in there. It's got Diddy Kong in it. But Rare created Diddy Kong, so that doesn't that argument doesn't hold water in, with that game, isn't it? And you know, yeah. And you know, but isn't, isn't Diddy Kong owned by Nintendo? Like yeah, Rare, exactly. crea- yeah, so it's Rare just, created it's... the character, but it was just a, the, um, yeah. obviously part of the Kong family. And, you know, let's be honest... You talk about Goldeneye and stuff. The game that we both miss the most, that we really wish was in the, in the collection more than any other game, had to be Mickey Speedway USA. Of course, of course, that classic. Yeah, that, that there was only ever two N sixty four games I never got round to playing that Rare made, and uh, Killer Instinct Gold was one, and the other one is Mickey Speedway, and I think it's missing from the. I think it's a whole. I think you need to track it down. I think we should track it down and then just have like a multiplayer evening. Yeah, is that should we should? I think we need to do, do that. I wonder if um, if the sarcasm is being picked up. No, <laughs> so I'm a bit concerned. I'm a bit concerned. Then, well, I I would have liked, and this is this is how demanding gamers are. Hands fans are. There are thirty wonderful games in this collection, and I play it and I go, why were there no Game Boy games? Why, yeah. why, where was the DS titles? You know, there was a few. I, I wanted to play um, Banjo Kazooie Quintilda's Revenge. Yeah, which I guess is the the, the third platformer in the Banjo Kazooie series. I know it was an isometric thing for the Game Boy. I'd love to have played that. Banjo Pilot. Banjo Pilot, I forgot about that one. There was even the um, the handheld version of Viva Pinata. Yeah, and P- Perfect Dark on the Game Boy Color. Yes, oh, that was bad. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. I wasn't a fan of that. <laughs> it wasn't as good as Perfect Dark. No, but, uh, I think that's probably why I wasn't a fan of it. But um, I mean, Obviously, it's Mr. Pants. Yes, of course, it's Mr. Pants. I personally, and there's actually a lot of differing opinions out there, would have rather had Conker's Live and Reloaded the re- Xbox remake of Conquer yeah. Bad Day, Dan Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, because I think it looks better. It is ultimately the same game. The online modes are different. Um, but also, I guess I've played Conquer's Bad Fur Day to death. I'm also one of the people that proudly boasts that I've got Conquer's Bad Fur Day, uh, the actual boxed N64 version. Yes, you do. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. It's horrifically devalued on eBay now. Yeah, well, it's not. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. So. But I think the best thing about Rare Replay is outside of the games, it's all wonderful. All the best games are still in there. Um, it's, it's the extras. Yeah. That whole Rare Revealed section, were like, you know, not, not just. I mean, so many people, so many developers could have just thrown in, like, one making of documentary, just rounding up everything, and then, say, some concept art and, st- you know, screenshots and posters and stuff. But they've really gone to town on, you know, like there's little documentaries for all of the key titles. And the fact that they got, you know, people in, mm-hmm. you know, members of the Rare family, even if they're not at Rare anymore, it, it, I think you keep on saying, like, it, it feels like a box set. 
Yeah, it looks like a DVD box. Yeah, it does. Like one of those kind of special ultimate anniversary editions that come with, you know, one disc is the film and then seven discs are the extra stuff. My favourite extras, and you can get some extras, there's even more of these being released on YouTube. It's the um, cancelled games. Yeah. Those are fascinating. Rare's a secretive business, let's be honest. Historically, they're Mm. behind that wall in Twycross. You know, you couldn't, you know, there's a huge driveway. I've heard, you know, everyone trying to break in and being, I don't know, mauled by dogs as they climb over the fence. Um, but um, uh, uh, to see them open their doors like this and yeah. say here's our secrets I, I was delighted it's almost like the opposite of opening Pandora's box rather than all the evils of the world you've got all this great rare stuff yeah. that games, we never got games you wish they'd made yeah. um, they actually got to finish and then, what was the, the spider one that you introduced oh, me to yeah yeah. there's, there's, there's quite a few um, there's quite a few like that but there's also things like you know I, I I think I don't want to spoil it for people. If you if you've not got Rare Replay, mm. um, you should definitely get it. It's incredible value for money. There's also these little games in it which are like snapshots. Well, they are snapshots. Yeah. Of the games, you can almost even. I've not I've not tried enough of those yet. I need to give them. I've a tried a couple, game. and I'm going to try a couple more. I think after we've uh, interviewed our man, mm. at the moment, um, and uh, because it's a bargain, this it's a bargain. It's like you can probably get it for a tenner, maybe a little bit more, but it, it, a tenner for thirty amazing rare games. I don't ever think this game is going to sell Xbox consoles by itself. You know? No. Halo 5 might have to do that. But if you've bought yourself an Xbox One, this is the second game to buy. Right? It's, just... it's, it's an essential purchase for anyone that does own an Xbox One. Mm. And not just Rare fans, I think. I think there's, there's such a, a great scope of how far gaming has come mm. just through looking at one studio. What really like, delights me is the, the, the myth that I used to adhere to is that Rare have got worse since they left Nintendo seeing the games that they've made in the years since they left Nintendo seeing them together like this and playing them you realise actually no they haven't yeah. they haven't I mean you know Connect Sports isn't in the collection but up until that up until they moved into the Connect world and they're moving away from that now I was quite I'm, I think actually you know what I, I, I misjudged um, but shall we get our uh, Let's get our guest in. Um, we once again have, we're very lucky to have someone actually from Rare. Oh, that's great. So we're going to have a, a brief musical uh, interlude and then we will introduce... You played the song. I know, well, I've got, we've got the now, but now we've got the nice little instrumental version. Oh, okay. That's on the menu. Don't sing it, I'm going to play it. Okay. We're joined this week by Paul Collins from Rare. Paul, tell us uh, a little bit about uh, yourself, what you do, and what you've done on uh, Rare Replay. Yeah, sure. Uh, My name's Paul Collins. I'm currently a lead designer working at Rare. Um, First started back in 2009, uh, working on the Connect Sports franchise. And uh, I was, as I said, lead designer on Rare Replay, just helping out with the UI and bringing this awesome collection of games together. Obviously, the, the thing, anyone's going to have their own view on this, which I think must be a nightmare. But how long did it take you to, to, to you and the team to whittle down to the 30 games that was uh, eventually picked? Uh, it, was a, it was a fun task. Definitely had a few uh, back and forth with people. But um, when we really started to think about the criteria and just showcasing everything that Rez done over the 30 years, it became it became a lot easier to do, particularly when we started thinking about we need to show off like the amazing characters, the worlds and just gameplay and these games that just you really think like only rare could really create and when we kind of had that criteria it just started to become a lot easier for us and it was just great to be able to really showcase six different generations of gaming all in one collection were there any that kind of nearly made the cut or that people were kind of lobbying for but didn't quite make it uh there, there were one or two in there but um it wasn't we didn't really have any like major hard decisions for it. I think you can kind of maybe look back and say, Oh, could we added um maybe one or two more of the Spectrum games in there? But like for me it was great to be able to get like uh, both RC params in there to kind of show the differences between like the first one that we all know and love and then for some people they might not have necessarily picked up uh, RC Param two when the kind of the SNES era really took off and of course Mario Kart in there as well. But RC Param's great with its four player gaming and also um from Battleto wanted to kind of show off like its arcade roots and then also how it how it played on a, an 8-bit family console adam park who i think was the lead producer on the game was like, he told me that um uh that rc prime 2 was quite a last minute addition and i still just couldn't get out of him to tell me what it was that that lost its place to rc prime 2. <laughs> uh i can't remember straight off the top of my head what it was 
ones either, but hopefully it must have uh, trumped that last one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, in I'm interested in sort of, it, I mean, obviously, there must have been, it's, it's, there's some, some decisions that, you know, some people have varying views on, and this isn't me saying that these were the wrong decisions, but I was interested to know whether or not they were, he how discussed they were. I mean, there was, there's no Game Boy or DS titles in mm. the list. There's no handheld titles in there at all. No, though, yeah, and, um, and oh, maybe they weren't good enough. Um, Conquer's Bad Fur Day over Conquer Live and Reloaded. And I've read reviews that said, oh, I'm not sure why they did that. And I've read reviews that said, well, they made the right choice there. It must be an absolute nightmare to get that right. Was, that, did, was yeah. there a lot of back and forth? Uh, I think... I think probably with this collection, there's always going to be one or two, oh, we could have done this, we could have done that. But I think... We haven't, you know, normally when a project's finished, everyone kind of goes, oh, we should have done that. I haven't really had too much of that this time around, which has been pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, with the, the Conquer's Bad Fur Day, I think even with like with Rare Replay in its inception, we, we one of the big reasons for doing this was, of course, um, on Xbox.com, people just always put their community feedback on there, which is awesome. And for us, I think there was five comments for Rare in the top 20, which was just bring back your, your amazing collections, bring back Conquer. And... We were really keen on making sure that this was a fan service. And when we did look at particularly Conker's Bad Fur Day, the one that always came up was the original, the N64 version. That was the one everyone knew and loved or they didn't get a chance to play it in the first place. And I think um, when we think about the value of it, Conker's Bad Fur Day, I believe, for, if you go on something like eBay or an auction site, it's like £100 just for the cartridge on its own. So yeah. it definitely felt like this was the sought after one and um, why we wanted to put most attention into that one. Yeah, I think you might be responsible for my box copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day devalued drastically. <laughs> so thanks for that. Sorry. Well, it's even like something like uh, RC Prime 2 as well. When we kind of had a little look on, on eBay about what, what uh, prices those were going for, I think £180 for RC Prime wow. 2. Wow. But as you said, that might have gone down. So it's it was pretty crazy. When we looked at like how much the collection would come to altogether, I think it was two thousand dollars to try and get all the games alone and that doesn't even include like televisions that can play some of them <laughs> yeah so. i think there's a lot of good value on that like, just the basic gist of you know 30 games for 30 pounds well, well, 30 20 years. quid yeah 20 quid like but like, a 30 game nice. collection like I, there's some real gems in there there's some there's mm. some games that you could easily charge five ten pounds for individually you know, and were up to, you know up to a couple of years ago you know, with the um, the Xbox 360 versions of Perfect Dark, Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, you know, these were going for what about a tenner a pop, yeah. and now you've got all of them yeah. on one disc. Like that, that's an incredible. I mean, I, how much did Rare actually have to do with that decision? Because obviously, you're published by Microsoft, so I don't know what role you guys play in that. For us, it was even from our side, it was just all about the value. I think every everyone agreed that we didn't want this to be an um and ahring purchase. We just wanted you to look at it, see the content, see how much extra was in there, and it, even just the games alone, we had the, the snapshot challenges in there. I, I don't know if you had the chance to play yeah. through those yet. Just little mini games that really kind of incentivize you to try out some of the, the older classics in the collection. It really is just bursting at the seams with um, features, and everyone was just all for any extra awesome stuff that we could jam into the collection. I was saying this earlier to James. Uh, it, it's the, the it, it's I've never I've never seen a box set like it. It feels like a special edition. Mm. You know, like you get in films <laughs> they exist all over the place. Right? You've got these you know Twin Peaks. I bought the Twin Peaks box set like a year ago, yeah. which has all of these features in it and even extra features built on top. And games they don't do that. You might get a collection. You might get a oh, you know a HD collection. It doesn't. It's not done with the sort of care and sort of you know the interviews and they talk about the snapshots there. And there's loads of other things to talk about, yeah. which I'm sure we'll get onto in a moment. But there's, there's, it, it, it feels like, um, I hope other people do it. I hope, I mean, maybe Rare is a unique company that has such an eclectic line of titles that it can, it can do that. But um, it, is, it is really, I, I always recommend, I've said this to anyone that's been listening to the show, um, if, I think for people out there who haven't bought Xbox Ones yet, they might, they won't, I don't think they'll buy Xbox One for Rare Replay. They might get it for Halo 5 or, or Forza, whatever, or Tomb Raider. And then I think, but then I think to justify it, the one game's never enough, to then say, well, I can get Rare play as well and mm. get all these games. Yeah. I think it's one of those titles that's, that ever exists as a perennial seller. Um, uh, there wasn't really a question there. I just wanted to, to, to issue that <laughs> no, point. I mean, it means a lot to hear that. Definitely. Um, did, so did you, I mean, you worked, you, was it the front end stuff? Did you do much in the emulation process? Because I understand that was a real challenge um, from from our perspective, we didn't have um, too much uh, work on the emulation. Obviously, from the design perspective, we we got involved a lot more from the snapshot side of things, where we were kind of taking like bite-sized pieces of yeah. our, our favourite bits of the game. So, but that was more just kind of um, a layer of scripting on top that kind of allowed us to play around with like the, the scoring criteria. But uh, yeah, it's probably uh, James Thomas and those guys are the the best ones to speak to around that kind of 
that area. Were the snapshots, were they, were, I mean, was it just, was there any influence from NES Remix? Everyone seems to compare it to that. That seems to be the obvious uh, comparison. Uh, it was definitely a good inspiration for us, just seeing like how it kind of incentivized you to try out maybe some of the older games if you hadn't played Donkey Kong before. And we obviously didn't go to the, the kind of the extremities of allowing you to play as different characters inside of them. But like I said, for us, it was all about just showing off some of these games. Say, for instance, Diggity Rock, you might not have ever seen that yeah. game before. And you just want to kind of get a little bit of a taste of what they're about. And another reason why I really like the snapshots, too, is that we wanted to obviously make the full games as accessible as possible, like back in the day you could play through these you didn't need any save states but i think today we're a lot more kind of um get easily frustrated don't we if we mm-hmm. kind of things aren't going our way so we wanted to allow them to be as accessible as possible and rewind them but with the snapshot challenges that was where we could have them a bit more kind of hardcore where it was one life and then game over and again it adds to more of the the competitive side of it with the leaderboards in there too and that's why one of the reasons why we were really keen on getting them in did the team find that there were any titles that were tougher to make them accessible to to um, audiences today? Because obviously, obviously things like Perfect Dark, Banjo, you know, people are familiar with platformers and shoot 'em ups. But like, you know, going back into the older games, are there, were there ones where when you guys were kind of dusting them off, as it were, you you were concerned like, you know, how are people going to get into this? How do we make this accessible? Yeah, it was. A- Really good point, actually. I'm going back to like even the, the Spectrum and um, the 8 beer is you, you kind of really start to understand design decisions and you do realize kind of how, how young our industry is. And that you, as you start to learn, like, say, for instance, some of the 8-bit games, they never even had a press start on the um, on the main menu to get into the game. And you realize these days how, like, how players need those kind of just quick um, prods just to tell you how to get into games, where the, where the save states are. And it was quite interesting to see, kind of even from Slalom, Slalom being one of the first uh, 8-bit games that... Uh, that Ultimate and Rare did, that it's just get in the game, go straight away. You don't even know that A was the button to get into it or how do you even get two players working in Battletoads. So it is quite interesting to see how uh, how far we've come and like how we've realised how important the UX is even before you get inside of a game. Um, and again, that was a good reason for the, the snapshots because it kind of just kind of bypassed some of the UI and it would allow you to get in there. And we tried to make them a bit more accessible, particularly for the, the older classics with the uh, the ability to save anywhere you want. So you just bring up our, our, per, our rare replay menu, save the state and come back to it when you want. Or also the, we use game help um, quite a lot too, just to give you a few more tips and a bit more of a backstory to where these games came from. And so the tips proved to be uh, really bloody useful for, um, I think it was Killer Instinct <laughs> we were playing last. And then um, I found the game help button. It's like, yes, tips. Okay, right. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> the, the snapshot stuff, it also must act as, I think it's the word promotion. But there, there are some games that I immediately thought, well, I'm going to play more, obviously, because we're doing this podcast. But I mean, if I had, wasn't, I'd perhaps think, I'm not playing that. I'm not playing that. Yeah. Because I then had to go on the snapshots, I ultimately, I'd, or I would play some of them because like, they are snapshots of them. Mm. And I'm, I'm sort of getting mm. a taste of them. And if I liked them, then I'd be able to feel obligated to play them. And maybe that's it. It's a nice way of promoting perhaps some of the older titles that maybe newer fans are not so yeah, for sure. visiting. And, and for us, it was a nice way to kind of highlight some of the mechanics to the players as well. Um, something like Night Law for the Spectrum was a good example of that too, that there's some sort of kind of quick inventory tricks that you can do to give yourself a better jump boost in certain levels. Um, and again, like we, we highlight that in one of the snapshots so when you go into the full game you have a better understanding of like really getting the most out of it so i mean i think we should address the song i think we definitely <laughs> should address the song <laughs> we'll, we'll get this clear right now i love the song <laughs> we, we oh. both love as well oh, I, love, I don't love our version i don't love our version, version. <laughs> no 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 where did that You're come welcome. from <laughs> um well um it's a good um good opportunity to talk about the theme and we, we kind of explored a lot of different um kind of ways to bring all these games together and like really kind of unified them and we looked at um, some kind of analog more futuristic approaches to the UI but we really love the, the 2D uh, uh, theatre um, aspect of the game because it just really kind of showed off like how inherently British the studio is and all these games under one roof. I, I really liked uh, Justin Cook, uh, one of the designers here's kind of idea of what a rare game is and he kind of he kind of treats it like a pantomime in mean, that there really is something for everyone. The kids can instantly play it and then there's always those kind of quiet innuendos that kind of hit there for the adults too. I think that's why we kind of went for that feel for it. Um, and for me, quite a few of the, uh, the guys on the team are quite musical fan buffs and um, it felt like it gave us a little opportunity to write a little musical number there. And w- when everyone was on board with it, we just really went to town on it. It was funny, um, speaking of the snapshots as well, one of the, the ideas we had to begin with was kind of having like a, a mini game story mode 
where we kind of took you through the history of Rare and each game would kind of come on stage and have its own little musical number before you played one of the snapshots. Again, just to kind of show you the, the kind of the, the musical history of uh, Rare and the things that we've done. So sadly, um, with time time pending, we didn't get the chance to do that. So I was extremely oh, happy right. that we got the chance to do this song. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we had a, a couple of little numbers done, particularly for Jetpack and a little somber one for Banjo as well, which was really cool. Cool. That is, that's, that, that's, that's another rare game. Now, for my honest, for my honest, that's another cancelled rare game to do for your next <laughs> Yeah. Um, that, that would have been, that would have been genuinely awesome. I think what I liked, i tell you what, I, I don't, I think over the years, and Rare has, particularly in, perhaps during the Connect era, there were certain fans, the vocal fans, that were perhaps a little bit, uh, they, they felt like they'd the rare they knew had gone, and I, that, that that's a thing I kept seeing in the media. I kept seeing it, you know. And I, I, I don't think these people play Connect Sports because there's a lot of rare in Connect Sports. Mm. Some of the things I think people, you know, the, the Rick rolling when um <laughs> you you lost in Connect Sports season two. There's all you know, it's all there. Um, it's all very much rare. But I think people got that perception. And as soon as that but that opening musical number I, was an immediate reminder that that studio, that weird, bizarre studio that perhaps you used to love, and maybe. Yeah over the years it's still there and it's still absolutely mad i think that's what delighted me it felt like an old friend um singing <laughs> to me uh, you know i was i was i don't know it wasn't anything like the dk rap but it felt like this it was that it was that sort of level of silliness that i really yeah. enjoyed it, it, trying it, to get it on par with that <laughs> it, it definitely feels like the kind of the studio going back to its its roots and kind of and and like i said like that, well, that literally is the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously literally but i mean in terms of like uh, you know, designing something that's light-hearted, it's funny, and like you say, accessible to everyone. I mean, everyone. I mean, kind of. How did you guys go about deciding how you, how you would do that? Because as Chris says, like I have to confess, I've not played the Connect Sports games, but from the outside, they didn't seem like very rare titles. If that means anything they at are. all, they are. They, are. they, they are. don't. They may not look like it. They, they, they don't. There's a there's a there's a perception of rare that you have to live up to. And how did you go about kind of doing that? Uh, well, again, like with uh, the Connect Sports games, there was definitely a, an impetus on there to always make sure they're light-hearted and they have that rare feel. And um, I remember um, quite a few people on the team were like, we have to get that in there. And there were quite a lot of design documents around the light-heartedness of it. I remember playing football and there's kind of animal characters that you can kick the ball with. And we, we kind of went as far as we could do definitely with them. And I think, I think with uh, Rare Replay and, of course, CFEs, it, it, for me, it's definitely about just showing that Rare hasn't left. And I think even when, as soon as you, you, you start your first day at Rare, you really get that Rare feel. You can kind of feel the charm and everything that goes into a game seeping into you. And it's really hard not to carry that into the games that you make. And hopefully with Rare Replay and CFEs, you'll definitely see that and like how much making games means to us and uh, how, how important making these games for the fans is. I've said this on previous shows, and, and I'll say it again now. Rare Replay for me is the best example of why Connect Sports wasn't wasn't out of touch with what Rare does. Because Rare is a studio. I mean, look at look at look at look at Rare Replay. It got, went from you did Battle Toads for a while, and you, you stopped doing yep. those. You did Killer Instinct for a while, you stopped doing those. You did Banjo Donkey Kong Country as well. That wasn't on the disc, you know what I mean? Uh, that stopped doing those. Banjo Kazooie stopped doing those to a certain degree. It still exists, but and then Perfect Dark is it wasn't that you gave up on the franchise. You just made new ones. You moved into different yeah. genres, different technology. Continually tried to push forward onto the next thing. And Connect Sports is just in keeping with that. And indeed. You know, you've moved on from Connect Sports and you're ploughing forward with other stuff as well. And that's that's exactly what Rare's always done. I remember before yeah. before E3 and there was all these people saying, I wonder what Rare's secret project is. Oh, for the 30th anniversary, I wonder if it's Banjo Kazooie coming back. And there was the Phil Spencer wore a Battletoads t shirt. I wonder if it's Battletoads is coming back. And I tweeted, if you can find my tweets, you'll see that that's generally true. I tweeted twice. If this is genuinely Rare keeping the uh, 30th anniversary and they're going to announce a new game. The new game they have to announce is a new IP. That is the best thing. That's what they do. And that mm. is that would be the thing that's in keeping in their heritage and their history. Um, yeah. And you did. So, um, <laughs> so I was very pleased <laughs> to be right. <laughs> ah, awesome. Well, I th- like, like you said, I think that's definitely one of the good things that Rare Replay has shown you is that as a company, we, as a studio, we, we, we're never kind of tied to just one genre. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about working here, that once once one project finishes, you really don't know what the next project is going to be. It can... It might be a sequel just because we feel like that's the right thing to do, or it might be something just completely out there that we've not done before. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love coming into the studio each day. You, re- you really don't know what, what, what the next project or what the next day is going to take you. And, and again, like we, we've made sports games as well before that too. So mm. it, it just really shows like any genre, we just we want to tackle it and we want to learn from it. And 
we always want to try and be one of the best in there and particularly if it means we can try something different that's never been done before i think they're the kind of things that definitely get us up in the morning were you were you in the room when i was i was actually i don't know if you were there and if you were then you can probably talk about it a bit more but uh, when i was in i was at the xbox conference in e3 and yeah Oh, I don't know if it, that, those when moments that those flags appeared, oh, and the flags appeared, and the roar in the room grew and grew. Don't be wrong; it wasn't quite Shenmue or Final Fantasy VII levels, but it had this. It was it was it was built and built and built. I'm I i do not work for Rare, and my ha- hair was standing on the end. <laughs> my hair was standing on the end. Um, it, I mean, what was that like for you guys? We were we were actually at the uh, the pods at the the free convention center just uh, still setting up at the time. We managed to get one of the streams working, but we, we could definitely hear the fans and the audience in the background cheering at those moments. And yeah, yeah hats off to marketing and everyone that worked on that uh, video. They really they really could understand the pacing and what it would mean to the fans as all the flags came on, and then just kind of really getting that sentiment across. That, yeah, this is this is going to be a great collection. It was a pretty and, and just talking about definitely and like even just going on so certain websites and forums just seeing how many people were super excited for the collection and like, like you said earlier just i would have given you 15 dollars just for jet force gemini or blast core it, it just we just wanted it to be like i just have to get this game and it was it was great coming out of uh, e3 as one of the most pre-ordered titles as well yeah i was oh yeah i think top yeah it was in pre-order charts wasn't it? Was, yeah, yeah it was something like yeah, that yeah. Yeah. yeah it was high up on amazon yeah, yeah I ordered it at any moment i think it's all the moment it went up and, uh, and and first number one uh, since since Banjo Kazooie in 1998. Years. That, that was a, a great feat for us as well. We were toasting that one. Nice. I went through our old uh, after we talked to Ed Brian about Banjo Kazooie. I went through um, uh, the uh, CTWs. We got, we got all the old CTWs, the old uh, games. If anyone listening, home, the old games industry trade paper before MCV took it over. Um, went through those in the basement, and there's a there is I found the pullout with the Banjo Kazooie at number one. Probably, worse, <laughs> probably send it into rare. <laughs> you should, you probably yeah. should. But, um, so that's, that's, that was always quite nice. But I couldn't believe it was the first number one they've had. I always thought Connect Sports must have done it, but clearly not. No. Because um, that, that sold like. Yeah, sold the, the franchise, I believe, over 10 million and uh, two BAFTAs. So again, it was, it was great for the, the recognition that that, the, that franchise got us as well. Mm-hmm. See, interestingly, like, kind of, I, on Connect Sports, I. Was never overly fussed on it. I think um, we moved. I think we're changing the top. <laughs> I know. I'm, tra- I'm changing the topic. Like, but no, but briefly, like, kind of, I, I wasn't overly fussed on the idea of Connect Sports because I already had Wii Sports, and I wasn't even into that that much, apart from the usual Boxing Day, mm. you know, tennis tournaments. But having played Rare Replay and going through all the games, it's kind of made me fall back in love with the studio, <laughs> and made me think, you know what, I really should yeah, give I the Connect the Sports guy it goes uh, games a go. Yeah, you do. yeah. I'm, I'm even at, as soon as I, I go back down to uh, London and at Christmas, I always get asked to bring my Xbox 360 and the Connect back with us to <laughs> to get them. They're great family games, and the, the party mode's a great example of that too, where you just get a little bite-sized goes on all the sports. So, yeah, it's it's definitely one that I always keep on going back to. And I, I had so much fun. Like, I have really fond memories of working on those games. Obviously, that was when I first started, and Greg and Greg uh, Mouse, George Andreas were showing me around. I got to work really closely with those guys, uh, Sean Reed, Gary Richards too. And I, I really learned so much. Even I was working on uh, bowling uh, for Connect Sports. And oh, great. Just, it, it, even you'd, you'd imagine just bowling on its own, you'd, you'd think, oh, it's just bowling. But the amount of design opportunities and uh, ways that I learned from that game and taking advantage of all the design masters that we had at the studio, it, it really did like follow on and even getting onto a controller game. We will, we will, we will, I know it's not on the disc, but we will do that. Yeah. The Xbox. I think we will go back to that. Um, uh, let's just talk about something else that actually is my favourite thing about the discs, about where we play, uh, actually outside of replaying all the old rare games. That's obviously the best thing. Second best thing about where we play, it has to be the interviews, it has to mm. be the making of documentaries, it has to be the cancelled game stuff. I mean, we, were you involved in much of the recording? How was it to get the team back in, the some of the old team members back in to, to talk about their creations? It was great, and again, thank you to everyone that took part in uh, those interviews, and that's helped us even even today um, doing Twitch streams or helping us with uh, any interviews coming forward. It's just been great that every, everyone's been really open and excited to get involved with the uh, inside of the collection and celebrating the history. Um, for, for us, everything in Rare Replay was trying to incentivize players to really check out the whole collection and. Like you said, we wanted it to feel like it had this box set feel and those interviews felt right for that. And we did, I think when you you look back at Rare, we have always kind of been quite secretive and we wanted to kind of 
the back the curtain just a little bit, just to give you a bit more insight into some of the games and how they were created, and maybe some of the kind of funny anecdotes that happened during the time of those games. And it was it was great even for me. Like there was some uh, aspects of, say, for instance, Blast Core that I didn't know about, where they kind of didn't think about the Rumble Pack at first, and then suddenly it really took off. And um, it, it's just been great having them all in there. I, I didn't have too much. Um, too much uh, input into what what um, what games in that were looked at for interviews. Uh, Dal Murchie, Leah, Aaron, and a few others uh, really worked on that, and they did such a fantastic job in kind of really collect, getting the games that you'd be very interested. If if someone told you there's going to be an uh, an interview video in there, you'd want it to be about uh, Blast Core or Banjo. But they did a really good job of kind of finding one or two of the other games, and particularly some of the unreleased titles in there too. That Again, we did, we wanted it to feel like it was uh, no holds barred. It was it was just kind of showing you some of the, the really cool aspects of the studio. It's been a really noticeable change, like not just the fact that you're laying bare all this kind of insight and anecdotes into the, into the, the making the games on the disc and you know as, as special features on the disc, but the fact that you know even outside of that, you know via Twitter and Instagram and all you know all your right. social media and, and this this show as well, but like you guys you guys are out there and you're talking to people and you're having these themed weeks on Twitter. So we had Banjo Week and Con- mm-hmm. Conquer Week. It's like. The, this uh, is a studio, you, isn't it? That we're used to never ever hearing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember. I remember away in the middle of nowhere behind six gates and forty security guards. I remember and, earlier this year. I can't remember who it was that tweeted, but someone at Rare tweeted a picture of sheet music, saying, "Oh, this is going to be a big year for these nuts." And I'm not a music person, I assume it was maybe the Rare replay song. And I remember seeing that tweet and thinking, "Right." We won't find out what that means for months, <laughs> if not years. I think that was uh, Robin Beanland. Yes. He's, uh, he's really good on the Twitter at teasing. And yeah, we always go to him for throwing out a few new uh, Twitter ideas. Yeah. Well, Robin Beanland, James, obviously, as you know, did the music, did the, did the audio for Conquer. So he's one of the greatest yep. men that's ever lived. Um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, that's what I mean. I was going to talk about. I mean, you haven't seen Black Widow. I showed James um, mm, uh, yeah. Black Widow uh, just before this podcast because he um, he hadn't seen that video and he, he sat there. We just said very loudly to the you know, room opposite of people. Why was this never released? <laughs> and this is the, it is so wonderful to see the studio suddenly open up. I, mm. it, I tell you what, as a fan that's never seen behind the, uh, the the rare curtain before, um, sitting there used to refreshing scribes back when I was in the in 2000, 2001, trying to find out, you know, what, what, what's the what hint could they put in? The Christmas cards used to send out. I've got a rare Christmas card from like four years. I don't even send them out anymore. But from like four years ago, uh, when I actually joined the games industry, was, that was a highlight in my well, It's one of the highlights of my career. I got a rare Christmas card and I was scanning it trying to think, where's the picture of Killer Instinct that leads everyone to suspect that the new Killer Instinct is yeah. coming out? And that's what you always I, got. Like, I always you? remember the, uh, was the Christmas card um, <laughs> where there was an Xbox and a PlayStation wrapped up under the tree. And that was, and, and this is when Possibly, Rare was... Possibly, it was shaped like, yeah. Yeah, and this is when Rare was still a second party in Nintendo studio. And everyone like, that's it, they're going multi-platform. I was like, no, 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 they are trolling you. Yeah, <laughs> Just covering it with little Easter eggs and little hints <laughs> to throw you off. Yeah, yeah. It's, it does, it does, it doesn't, it's wonderful to see. I mean, Rare Replay is wonderful, it's, 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 just, it's, it's a treasure that won't start keep you. I think um, Adam Park told me that it was, it's got seven hours, worth, 700 hours, seven hours? <laughs> 700 hours worth of gameplay in it, but I think it's got way more than that. Yeah, it's, so it's you, crazy. You can like, easily lose 100 hours to just the vehicle creator on knots and bolts. Yeah. yeah, or Viva Pinata building it's your job. best garden trying to get the, the exotic pinatas. That takes take some of the hours myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favourite thing about uh, Rare Replay? Um, in, t- in terms of the collection, it, it probably has to be just really reconnecting with the fans and just showing off some of the amazing stuff that we've done over the, the 30 years. And again, just boasting six generations and for me, like guilty, um, when I first started at Rare, some of the games even in the collection I didn't realise that we'd made. The, the worst one, of course, being a Battletoads fan, I didn't realise that we made Battletoads Arcade and getting the chance to explore that and play through that and really kind of uh, speak to Greg Mowers about like the design decisions, how different it is creating a game for arcade compared to um, a home console game was uh, was really interesting for me. So there was, there was so many kind of moments during the project where I learned more about the history myself and found like kind of little mini toys that were made for the games or kind of old cartridges that didn't see the light of day. It was it's so hard. Like whenever I've uh, done an interview over the past uh, year for the project, I always come away forgetting to talk about one or two of the things, some of the features, because like I said, it's just so jam packed. Yeah. I think that was the greatest thing for it. That there was there was really it was just about get as much amazing cool stuff into the collection as possible before the time ran out. 
<laughs> I do love that this this is really is the tip of the uh, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to rares like past history. You know, you, you say you, you, you yourself a, a rare employee didn't realise there was a Battle Toads arcade. Yeah. We were yeah, I was just getting to that. Tell Ben Palm is an associate editor at MCV. He's a colleague of ours that we that we work with. He was trolling and us a little bit. He, yeah, he was trolling us a little bit because he, he knows that we love Rare, so therefore that, he that's... He pretended he was only one good game Rare's ever made, and it was Viva Piñata. Yeah. So then we started <laughs> to read out some of the games that he'd made. Because he's, he's, he's a little older than us, so he, he, he yeah. remembers the Nair's era and the Spectrum era. Oh, we, we found like the Wikipedia list of everything, and we were going through like you know the wrestling games on Nez and Game Boy. Oh, actually, I had those. <laughs> Spider-Man on Game Boy. Yeah, I had that. That was really good. Uh, Snake Rattler Roll. Oh yeah, no, that one was good. Crazy. No, was that, what was the? Uh, the oh, uh, yeah, he's just in, we, there was so many he games. He started off by saying they've only done one good game, and he ended up saying I've done twelve and a half good games. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's a good. That's a good I'll take it. Number, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was only joking in the first place, but it was. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it's incredible. Like, it, it does kind of show you. It's like oh yeah, there, there are so so many more games that you know even you know just for licensing reasons like maybe you know or or just that they're old games you can't include. On the collection at all, um, but it's just it's amazing how much how much the studio has put out in the last thirty years. This is this is yeah. probably the hard question for me to ask, and I'm I'm sort of worried about it because I understand that somebody perhaps said something that you consider doing DLC for Rarely Play, and of course that got a lot of people like excited. It is, I mean, I I'd be surprised if you did. To be honest, I think thirty games, thirty years. I think that pretty much is it. I think that sums it all up. But is that still something that's been discussed? Um, sadly not. We're not currently looking at any DLC plans. I think for us, particularly coming up to the holidays, the the, the thing that we're really uh, keen on is just trying to get as much awareness of uh, Rare Replay out there as possible. Mm. I think that was one of the, the interesting things for me of, over the shows that we've done and getting the opportunity to do that has been awesome to show off all the Rare games was that when uh, players would first come up and have a look at Rare Replay and go into the game gallery list for the first time, they, they didn't realise what games were in the collection and then people that might not necessarily have an Xbox or a one of the new generation consoles to today, but may have had fond memories playing an 8-bit or a Spectrum title before that. When they when they see the Attic Attack logo, they just instantly remember, I played these games as a kid, I can't believe they're in the collection. So for us, we, we're really keen on focusing on, like, if there are some people out there that may be out of touch with gaming now, that there is this amazing collection out there, and there's a, there's a reason to pick up an Xbox One and rekindle your love of gaming. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely where we're at. That's probably the best way to end that. In the interview, I don't know about you, Jen. Yeah, that works for me. Um, I was because I was going to ask some really rubbish questions. I thought I I've got one question left on my list, which is: Were the stamps that you get as you play the game a reference to the stampers? If I ended on that <laughs> question, I'd be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the uh, the final achievement you get for I completing? I have seen that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was that our little the, shout out. The ultimate fan. It's the it's the stamp for achievement, isn't it? It's the well, I can't yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Because I've, I've seen I've seen that um, that rare actually. There's been tweeting the you know the, the people who have, have have unlocked everything on the game. They're like, well done, you're an ultimate fan. You're an ultimate fan. They're like, that that's brilliant. Like, it's kind of celebrating those who are celebrating you. It really means a lot to us to really kind of showcase the fans and just to highlight to them and, and say a massive thank you to them for following us all over the 30 years. It must be quite, It must give you. I don't know. I don't want to speak out of turn, but it does feel like uh, it's all about rare again. Like Rare is being talked about as a studio again this year. I know it's your 30th birthday, so of course you would be. I mean, I'm looking forward to the insert coin t shirts that are coming out. I'm mm, looking forward to I've, I've, <laughs> I've pre ordered one, I couldn't afford any more, unfortunately, of the uh, Grant Kirk Hope vinyls. Oh, there's a Black Battle Toast one as well, I didn't get that. But um, a Banjo Kazooie, one of those. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait for that as well. Um, uh, it feels like everyone's talking. Does that is this giving you a lot of excitement and impetus as you head into Sea of Thieves? Oh, definitely. Like we, we wanted to try and make it feel like this is the year of rare, and it, it was great. Like starting with E3 with that one-two punch of celebrating the old and showing how much that means to us as we go into CFE. So, yeah, it's it's an exciting time to be working at rare for sure. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. No, no worries. Thank you for having me. No worries. Thank you for the awesome podcast. I've been enjoying them all so far. Oh, thank oh, you. Great. Well, I hope we'll keep it up. It'll be great. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to come back anytime. Excellent, we will bear that in mind. We'll bear that in mind, yeah. <laughs> Bye. So, Chris, what have we got next time? I'm really, really excited. We've actually already recorded this, so I already know what's good, what it's going to be like. Okay. Um, uh, the next podcast is a special dedicated to the composer, Grant Kirkhope. It tells you his story from Rare from the moment he joined the studio, 96, 97 time, I believe, 
all the way up until he left. He gives us amazing insight into creating music. He goes behind the scenes of making all the games he worked on, which included Perfect Dark, Banjo, GoldenEye, Viva Pinata, Grab by the Ghoulies, Donkey Killer Kong Instinct, 64. Donkey Kong 64, um, and that rap. And that rap. We will be discussing that, that rap. rap. Yeah, so please download that one. That one is definitely one not to miss. Definitely. We will be back with that very shortly. In the meantime, you can find Rare Replayed, all of our episodes, at rarereplayed.com. If you're listening to us on iTunes, you can also find us on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can also find us on Android apps such as Player FM, Stitcher, and Pocket Casts. Or you can interact with us via Twitter, at Rare Replayed. See you next time. See you next time.